Halloween, Miss Kendra here. How many of you love hanging out at home? Well, today at Connect HQ, they'll be learning what it's like to want to be at home once they figure out where their home is. Let's watch and see what that's all about. So what's this gadget I'm testing here? Glasses help us see and hearing aids help us hear, but no one has made something to help your sense of smell. It's like a smelling aid. It's a rough draft. Just describe what you smell. Whoa, I can smell everything. Can you describe it? Well, it's like a mixture of good things and bad things. I can smell freshly baked cookies and, oh, rotting bologna on top. Uh, let me turn down the intensity. Oh, I can smell my nose hairs! Uh, I didn't say turn it down. We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My name is Edison, and this is how we discovered what heaven looks like. Have you guys seen this photo going around online? Is it the one with the penguin on top of the sea turtle? Because I'm pretty sure that's photoshopped. No, that one's shopped, all right, but I was talking about this photo from heaven. Like a heavenly view? No, a woman claims to actually have a photograph of heaven. She says it's authentic. That's impossible. How can you take a picture of a place that doesn't exist? Heaven exists. It's a real place. Well, I mean, it's not a place that you can get there physically. Not by a plane or a rocket ship or a hot air balloon. How did the lady get there and back with a camera? It doesn't make sense. She says it fell from the sky. It's causing a lot of debate online. People are arguing whether heaven is real or not. Hmm. I think our best course of action would be to make a transmission about some facts about heaven. It will help clear up the confusion. <gasps> Rodney, I have an idea for a verse skip the skip vision group could do. I find it best to consult with Professor Malcolm when I have big questions. It usually helps. Sounds like a great idea. Let's go see what he thinks about this photo from the sky. <clears throat> oh, gentlemen, welcome back to the Rad Lab. <laughs> Edison, how is that smelling aid of yours coming along? It's incredible. I could smell clouds. <laughs> it needs a few tweaks to stabilize the power. Mm, delicious. <laughs> uh, Professor Malcolm, we were wondering if the research and development group can... Oh, we prefer the RAD group. Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah. We were wondering if the RAD group could help us answer some questions about heaven. Ooh, heaven. The RAD group has done a lot of research about heaven. It's on my computer. In a folder called... Another day in paradise. <laughs> While we don't know exactly what heaven is like, the Bible gives us lots of clues on what we can expect. A lot of people online are debating whether or not heaven is real and what it looks like. Well, the best place to start is this Bible link we've been working on. It'll answer those questions and some others. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. God's word for things to discover. This book is alive, full of answers and godly advice. This book is alive. See the wonderful stories inside. Every day I'm searching, read through history and poetry. How much Jesus loves me. God's great story lives. There's no other book like this. This book is alive. Revelation. Is heaven for real? After Jesus died on the cross and came back to life, he promised to give a special gift to his followers. He told his disciples that he was going to go back to heaven and prepare a place for them to come be with him forever after they died. 
He said he would make a special place for people who put their faith in Jesus and chose to follow him. Jesus said there would be enough room for all of his followers from all over the world. How can you go to heaven? Going to heaven is like a wonderful present you can only open after you leave earth forever. Jesus promised that one day he would come back to get all of his followers and bring them to live in a new perfect world without sin. The Bible even says it will be like getting new perfect bodies and new white clothes to wear with no sickness, no sadness, no pain, and no fear. God's people will be rewarded in heaven for all they did during their life on earth to bring glory to God through the way that we live and love. But you get to go there because of what Jesus did, not because of what you did. How can you know you'll go to heaven? The Bible describes it like having your name written in a special book in heaven. Anyone who asks Jesus to take away their sin and gives their lives to him will have their name written in the book of life in heaven. Even though we don't go live there until after we die, the Bible says we are citizens of heaven and already have confidence that we will live forever in heaven with Jesus. But what will heaven be like? Even though we can't know exactly what it's like until after we die, the Bible does give us a few pictures about what it's like. The clearest picture God gives us of heaven is in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible. Many years after Jesus left earth to return to heaven, the apostle John was the last one of the 12 disciples still alive. The rulers of the Roman Empire sent John away to the island of Patmos as punishment for teaching people about Jesus. But that didn't stop John from carrying the good news about Jesus even further. God showed John a special kind of vision, also called a revelation, where God showed John what was going to happen in the future. And that future includes when all of Jesus' followers go to heaven after we die. God showed John the throne room of God in the center of heaven. Even though John may have been able to see heaven clearly, it was hard for him to describe in words because it was unlike anything he had ever seen on earth. Everyone in the throne room was all doing one thing, worshiping God. The elders and angels all did nothing but worship God all day, every day. Everything about heaven is all about God. John tried to describe other things he saw, like the colors. He said they were like jewels or prisms that reflected like rainbows. But no matter how we like to imagine it, the Bible tells us that no eye has seen and no ear has heard all of the wonderful things that God has prepared for those who love Him. So if no eye has seen or ear has heard the wonders of heaven, or nose has smelled it, unless they had a really cranked up Edison smelling aid, <laughs> then the photo that fell from the sky can't be real. What photo? Somebody online is claiming that an actual photo of heaven fell from the sky. <laughs> Preposterous. No one really knows what heaven looks like. But when we get there, we will understand what's going on. We won't be confused or frightened. It, it sounds like a mind-blowing surprise. I always imagined heaven as a place full of nothing but love and joy. No danger, no pain, no bullies, just everything that is good. I wish we could visit there. <laughs> But there's still one more question I have. A curious mind is always welcomed here. <laughs> Do we take our bodies with us when we die? Like, if it's not our bodies, then what part of us goes to heaven? Great question. And I think I have an exercise that will help show you. Uh, Mike, uh, please grab some blindfolds from that bin. <laughs> uh, these look like dangerous chemicals. Hmm, it does. <laughs> Ah, here are the blindfolds. <laughs> you should probably switch those labels. Yeah, that would be a wise idea. Yes, <laughs> the crazy thing is, when I look at this photo, I don't feel anything. What do you mean? Well, when I think about heaven, I feel almost homesick. Like, I can't wait to be there and experience God face to face. That's how I feel, too. That's how I know this photo is a fake. It doesn't give me that feeling. I mean, no photo ever really could. And that's what your skit should be about. Isn't there a verse in Hebrews that talks about heaven as our real home? Let's look it up. Uh, 
Everyone has a spirit living in their body. Are you saying there's a ghost inside me? <laughs> no, that's not what I'm saying. Listen carefully. God is a perfect spirit, and he made us to have a spirit too. It's your soul. It's who we are, and it lives forever. Are you saying that when our bodies die, our spirits won't die? Exactly. So allow me to demonstrate. Point to your spirit. Uh, how? Just like I said, point to your spirit, the real you, yourself, your soul. So Edison's spirit is in his chest and Mike's in his nose. Well, um, technically I'm in the Rad Lab, but I'm not sure where my spirit lives in my body. Unless it's a riddle. And he blindfolded us and moved our bodies and the real bodies are in the basement. <laughs> no tricks. I'm simply illustrating that you can't just locate the things inside of us that makes you, you. You can't tell me where your spirit is, but it's in there. I'm sticking with my nose. To answer your question, Edison, it's not our body, but our spirits that will go to heaven when we die. If we choose to follow Jesus and believe that he took the punishment for our sins on the cross. Heady stuff, but I think I understand what you're saying. When I choose to follow Jesus, heaven is my spirit's home. <laughs> Correct. And when we die, we get to see God face to face and worship him all the time. What if we don't choose to follow Jesus? Guys, guys, where are you? Guys, oh, whoo, <laughs> scared me. I thought I was alone. That was the point. You asked what it would be like when we die if you don't choose to follow Jesus. I, I get it. Your spirit will be separated from God forever. That's correct. Because if you don't believe that Jesus died for our sins, your spirit is still full of sin. And God can't be friends with a sin-filled spirit. Wow, I've never heard it explained so clearly, Professor Malcolm. Now we just have to explain it to everybody else. <laughs> it's a simple experiment anyone can try. Just simply close your eyes and point to where your spirit lives in your body. And think about where your spirit will go when you die. Where is your spirit's home? <laughs> Oh man, camp has been so much fun. Best week ever. Yesterday, I went kayaking and I saw two raccoons fighting over a pine cone. No way, yesterday I went hiking and I saw two bobcats fighting over a raccoon. I love it here. I wanna live here forever. Me too, it's great. I'm not being completely honest. Oh, I'm so glad you said something. I'm not either. I want to go home. Me too. I want to sleep in my own bed. I'm tired of sleeping at the top bunk of a smelly cabin. I want to eat my mom's cooking again. I am so sick of the mystery meat in the cafeteria. And I miss my dog. And there's too many bobcats around here. I'm kind of scared. Camp has been fun, but I'm ready to go home. It's like that verse from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 14. Say it with me like this. Hebrews 13, 14. Hebrews 13, 14. For this world is not our permanent home. For this world is not our permanent home. We are looking forward to a home yet to come. We are looking forward to a home yet to come. And just like that verse, camp is not our real home. And this world isn't our real home either. When we feel like we're longing for something beyond this life, that's our spirit longing for our home in heaven. Well, there's one more day left of camp. Do you think we can make it? I can if you can. See you at the capture the flag game. Watch out for bobcats. Well, what do you think? It's perfect. Yeah, you definitely captured that feeling that our spirits are not at home on this earth. I think this will sit very nicely with what Professor Malcolm taught us. I bet he had a lot of good things to say. I learned that my spirit's not in my nose. <laughs> and other things. Well, I think we have enough links now that we can make a connection transmission for people who are confused about heaven. It's nice to know that even though the photo's fake, heaven is real. It'll be really nice to see heaven one day, a good surprise. But let's remember, God put us on earth for a purpose. So let's be thankful for every breath. Every sunset. Every friendship. And every smell. Egg? Ew, oh. my! You don't need a smelling aid for that one. What is wrong with you? 
nasty. Hi, my name is Edison, and I'm a part of Connect HQ. We found an answer for you. The Bible tells us this in the book of Hebrews. Say it with me, like this. Hebrews 13, 14. For this world is not our permanent home. We are looking forward to a home yet to come. Heaven is that home that is yet to come when we choose to follow Jesus. No one knows exactly what heaven will be like. There aren't any photographs of it. We don't know what it will look like, feel like, or even smell like but we do know that it will be a mind-blowing experience and we'll get to meet God face to face. Can you imagine getting to meet the God who made you? Heaven is a real place, but we can't travel there physically. It's where our spirits will go when we die if we choose to follow Jesus and believe that he died on the cross. Jesus removes our sins so we can live with God forever when we die. There's no sin, sickness, pain, or loneliness in heaven. We'll be surrounded by God's greatness and get to worship him nonstop. Our spirit will finally feel like it's where it belongs. When I choose to follow Jesus, heaven is my spirit's home. If you've been confused about heaven, I hope this cleared up some of your questions. If not, keep asking. It's okay to be curious. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. When I twist the knob, I can smell my memories. Wow, I really can smell the air. Is someone cooking leather? I'm Gotham's reckoning. When you choose to follow Jesus, our spirit goes to live with him when we die. This is because we believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and removed sin from our spirits. Do you believe this? If you do and you've never made that choice to follow Jesus, you can do that today. All you have to remember are the A, B, C's. A, admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying him. B, believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C, choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is your leader and number one friend. If you want to make that decision today, be sure to talk about it with your Connect Small Group leader before you leave. When we realize that heaven is our true home and we get to see God face to face, you might even get a little homesick. Let's say today's point. When you choose to follow Jesus, heaven is our spirit's home. That's it. Nice work. We'll see you next week.